for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I am glad that the minority has made a point that I have been trying to make for a long time. Government is too big and has too many layers of bureaucracy. But um, I am one of the first people who asked for your resignation. And I did it after uh, thinking about it for a long time. And I, in my statement, when I asked for your resignation, I said that in your testimony before Congress, you either lied or you were grossly incompetent in your actions when it came to um, finding out about Fast and Furious and your handling of this uh, matter. The reason we keep bringing you back to Congress is because we want to know what you knew and when you knew it. It is a simple question. But the problem is that even though you have testified six times, apparently, on this matter in different occasions, your story continues to evolve and continues to change. In fact, today your, your story uh, changed a little bit. Let's talk about the facts. Everybody wants the facts, so let's talk about the facts here. On May of 2011, you said in the Senate Judiciary that you first heard about Fast and Furious a few weeks ago. In November of 2011, you said that a few weeks was inaccurate and that you should have said a couple of months. Mm. Emails released on January 28th show that you were informed by your deputy chief of staff of Agent Terry's death, and you just testified today that, yes, that is correct, on December 15, 2011. And this is what I'm trying to get to right here. On that same date, and it's already been shown, your deputy chief of staff learned that the guns used to kill uh, Agent Terry were from Fast and Furious. So what you want us to believe is that you were told about the death of Agent Terry, but you chose not to ask any follow-up questions on that same day about what caused the death of Agent Terry, and that, in fact, you didn't learn about the connection between the death of Agent Terry and Fast and Furious until a couple of months later. That's what you want us to believe, and that's fine. That may be the truth. But you can continue to come to Congress. That may be the truth. That's fine. I don't have a problem with it. You continue to come to Congress unprepared. Don't you agree that this is a pattern that you have of dealing with difficult questions and embarrassing issues in your office, continuing to come to Congress unprepared? I, I think it's very interesting what you just said. That may be the truth. What, we, what I said may be the truth. Yeah, it may be the truth. I, I'm not disputing it. I'm saying, but you continue to come to Congress unprepared. Don't, wouldn't you admit that you continue to come to Congress unprepared when you have to testify? Where you have to change your statements, you have to change, you have to withdraw. Uh, memos from your office. Isn't that a fact? No. Okay, let's look at that. Let's look at the facts. If we could go to the slides, please. When you came to Congress on February 14th of 2001, you were being asked about Mr. Mark Rich's pardon. Oh. And he says, Mr. Rich's name was unfamiliar to me. I had gained only a passing familiarity with the underlying facts of the Rich case. Go to the next slide. I did not acquaint myself with his record. Let's go to the next slide. I never actually saw that letter. There's a pattern here that we continue to hear in your testimony. Let's go to the next slide. You're Mr. right. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, you said, at the, you said at the beginning that this would be limited to fast and furious. And here we are. I'm seeing something up there from 2001. I'm just showing a pattern of behavior. The, the, yeah, we, we, we've honored that. And I've been very strict with my, with my people on this side to stay within the parameters that the State Chairman set. And as a matter of fact, I, I, I thought we've done a pretty good job so far. Uh, but, but, General, we'll suspend. Uh, I'm going to limit what he can do to anything he wants to say related to management style. And the, the Attorney General does not have to answer any questions. I don't actually see a question here. I have heard time and time again people talking about gun control and the need for it and a number of other items. It, expressing an opinion within the five minutes by a member of Congress is something I have limited authority. The gentleman has only five minutes. I do not expect the Attorney General to answer, although in defending himself in this case he may choose to. Uh, and I would caution uh, the gentleman from Idaho to get to the management question quickly uh, because this is about fast and furious. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, next slide. You are right. I didn't have the ability to look at all the materials. Next slide, please. I have not had a chance on May 13th of 2010 when you were testifying about Fast and Fierce. I have not had a chance to. I have glanced at it. I have not read it. Next slide, please. 
I have no recollection of knowing about Fast and Furious on October 7th, 2011. Next slide, please. On October 7th of 2011, on a weekly basis, my office typically receives over 100 pages and weekly reports are provided. Next slide, please. I certainly never knew about the tactics employed in the operation. Next slide, please. And this is on February 14th of 2001. And I think the one thing that would have changed this whole thing is if I had said to the person on my staff, what's the status of the rich matter? I believe that's what would have changed, and we would have avoided the six hearings that we have had about this matter, is if you would have just asked a simple question of your staff before you came to testify in Congress. What did we know about Fast and Furious, and when did we know it? You failed to do that. You failed to do that under the Mark Rich investigation, and you failed to do it at this case, and this is why we continue to have these, these hearings. Mr. Attorney General, I believe the American people deserve better. I believe that the American people uh, deserve to have an Attorney General that they can trust. And for that reason, I have asked for your resignation. And I believe that because you have been grossly incompetent in the way that you have prepared before coming to Congress, I think you should resign. Thank you very much. Mrs.